You ever go online and see that a game you played all the time as a kid is hated by a majority of people? And you go, what are you talking about? That game's awesome. I played it all the time. So you decide to replay it today to prove that your childhood isn't a lie. And then, oh. Oh. For me, one of those games is Dragon Ball Z Sagas, released for PS2, Xbox, and GameCube in 2005. Dragon Ball games have always been mixed. For every Budokai, there's a Dragon Ball Taiketsu. For every Dragon Ball Fighters, there's a Kakarot around the corner. You probably remember Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z because I just reminded you about it. Sagas, however, has a special place in the Dragon Ball game universe in that it's one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever. And after playing it again, yeah, I can see why. So you notice when the game starts up, there's no intro or anything. Just the title screen really gets you excited to play. Well, gotta start at the tutorial so I know what I'm doing. And it's not the worst one I've ever played, but one annoying thing that happens is when I was mashing buttons while the tutorial was speaking, I hit X to jump and skipped it. What? The tutorial was completely optional, so why even have a skip button? Hope I didn't miss anything important. After kicking the crap out of Piccolo, I feel I have trained enough to take on any challenge, and we start the game proper with the Saiyan Saga. We get a cutscene of a bunch of clips from the anime while the last time on Dragon Ball Z Guy narrates. They really cliff notes this stuff too. They describe all of the original Dragon Ball in one minute, and then they're like, oh, a Saiyan named Raditz showed up and kidnapped Gohan, go play. The actual game is essentially a 3D beat em up. Enemies show up as you go through a linear level, you can't move on until you beat all of them on the screen, and at the end of every stage there's a boss fight. The way your character moves is so weird. There's like a five second startup between when you move the joystick and the character actually picking up speed. Reminds me of Sonic in a weird way. So I'm playing this on PS2 and the controls go square punches, triangle kicks, you press these buttons one after another to do combos, eventually unlocking more as you progress through the game, I'll talk about them more later. Circle shoots your key jizz, you already know what X does. R1 blocks and you hold R1 and X to charge your key. L1 locks on and R2 and L2 do nothing as far as I know. Throughout the game you collect capsules, get 10 red ones, you get more health, get 10 yellow ones, you get more key meter. So I make it to this one part where I have to upgrade my abilities. To do that you need Z-Coins, the final collectible. But wait, I don't have enough? How's that possible? It's a linear path, how could I have missed it? So, okay, I guess I go back, I gotta look for it. Feeling like an idiot, I just start dicking around when I figure out shooting energy breaks certain environmental objects, like these rocks. So Goku, super powerful Saiyan, can't punch or kick a rock to break it. I need to shoot my key jizz. Okay. And yeah, it turns out the last coin was in a rock. Great. Wait a minute. I need this upgrade to get a charged key blast, which is essentially a Kamehameha, to destroy big rocks. But why can't I destroy them with the regular one? They're still rocks. They're just bigger. Or again, why can't I just punch or kick them? I can punch hard enough to send someone flying into a mountain, but I can't break a rock? I have to use Kamehameha. Rocks are too strong to fall through simple martial arts. It doesn't even go through the small ones. Fantastic. I make it to Raditz and damn, he kicks my ass. Dude does so much damage, he teleports all the time, his moves always seem to beat mine, I can't do any of that. Well, I died and fuck, I gotta play the whole level again. At least I know the rock strategy now. I make it back to Raditz and I figured out the tech, just block. Yeah, he can't break your guard, you take almost no damage and you just hit him after he does his combo. I'm glad I figured this out, but the fight took forever. I think it was only a couple minutes, but trust me, it feels like an eternity, like Dragon Ball Super. After finally beating him, we move on to the Mighty Nappa, that's debatable. We now play as Gohan too. You probably think, okay, this game lets you play as different characters, so that must mean they play differently. Nope. They all play exactly the same. The only difference is some versions can go Super Saiyan, and the Charge Blast is different for every character. I get you're changing characters for story reasons, but you couldn't have been bothered to change the walk speed or something. I make it to Nappa and... I'll send you to the next dimension! Uh, sure bud. I uh, beat him with my hold the block button technique. Alright, next is Vegeta, and I'm playing as Goku again. After beating him, we narrate past a lot of stuff, and now we're in the Frieza Saga, on Namek, as Vegeta. And it's here where a lot of the game's flaws came to the forefront. Remember those collectibles I mentioned? While some are in plain sight, and we discovered there are some inside destructible environments, the ones that are really annoying are high up. They're too high to jump to, so that's out of the question. You can fly, however you can't ascend. So, how do you get them? Well, you find the highest point in the stage, which of course is usually at the end of the stage, and then you have to fly all the way back to the beginning, making sure you comb the skies for all the items. I know what you're thinking. Why not just skip them? They're only collectibles for completion. Well, you can't. Remember, the capsules are the only way to get more health and more key meter, and you need the key meter for special beam attacks, which do a lot of damage. The Z-Coins you also need for upgrades. Some of these are mandatory, like an unblockable finisher move, which you'll need because the enemies block all the time. You also need to buy different combos. 
And of course, why not save up so you can buy the one that says it kills any enemy? Seems like a no-brainer. There are also ones that make the game straight up easier. Like faster key charging, faster flight, thank god. And getting up faster. Yes, most of these are about making the game go faster. Because it moves so slow. Not the frame rate or actual speed of the game, but the pacing of the levels and the bosses. I notice when flying back to get everything, the levels are actually really short, but they feel longer because of how many enemies there are. Every time you get done with one wave, two more show up right after. And remember, you can't move on until you kill all enemies, as Bulma will constantly remind you. Wait, what happened here? Did I just glitch past the invisible wall? Awesome, that means I don't have to play more of this game. I guess you can glitch past them if you're a speedrunner, like me. There's barely any enemy variety. Most of them are just jobbers that can shoot you if you're far away and then they punch you if you're close away. Sometimes you do get a heavy enemy or one that calls for more of them, but they rarely show up. I just mashed the instant kill combos and had little issue with the basic ones. Where this game goes too far though, are the bosses. Every single boss in this game is a long, tedious war of attrition. The blocking strategy stops working eventually as they get unblockable attacks or their moves start doing crazy chip damage. So you usually just run around dodging until they get close and hope your punch button beats out theirs. Rinse and repeat until they're dead. Let me show you an example. I get to this boss fight with Jason Burder. Jace keeps his distance and shoots at you as you try to get close, but he either spams his shots so you can't, or he beats you up. And then randomly, Space Cookie Monster over there will just charge at you, interrupting your combo. They also do this crazy team attack where they shoot you with a machine gun a blast that does crazy amounts of damage. It was a problem until I figured out if you stand in this one specific spot, they can't hit you. I can tell this game had a lot of love poured into it. I eventually beat them, and right away I fight Captain Ginyu, who is actually super easy. He spams the move Dig like a ground-type Pokemon, and you attack him when he pops out. Then you fight Ginyu and Goku's body, who is also piss easy. Maybe compared to Sonic and Knuckles back there, all these other fights just aren't as bad to me. And then, when you think the game can't get any more annoying, the next level is an escort mission. You gotta protect Dende so he can get to the Dragon Balls. This wouldn't be a problem, except for some reason your attacks hurt him. So when an enemy gets close, you have to beat them there, otherwise they'll shoot him. But when you're too close, your attacks hit him. Who thought it was a good idea to let your attacks hurt the person you're protecting in an escort mission? After that, you fight Frieza for the first time as Vegeta. Remember how the boss battles were just long, tedious battles of blocking? This one is that times 100, because you can't kill him, you have to survive until Piccolo shows up, so hold that block button. Eventually Frieza goes to his second form and... Wait, what? Why are there two Friezas? Uh, this shouldn't be right. They're not different characters. Why are there two attacking me? Well, it's a glitch. There is supposed to be one. I guess I got lucky. It doesn't make it harder. You just hold the block button. They can't do shit. I can tell this game was made with a lot of love. Next, we fight Frieza as Super Saiyan Goku. And to no one's surprise, it is ass. How Super Saiyan works in this game is there is a meter that fills up as you hit enemies. When it's full and flashing, you charge your key to go Super Saiyan. What makes this boss fight suck so much is you can only hurt Frieza when you're Super Saiyan. Hitting him regularly does nothing. So yeah, they somehow found a way to make already long boss fights 50% longer. I feel like they prioritized the wrong stuff here. Yeah, you do more damage in Super Saiyan, but I had to do that three times. It's not fun. After that, you get a weird level that takes place on Yard Rat? Who the fuck cares about Yard Rat? It's just another lame boss fight. After that, it goes to the Android at Cell Saga, and I don't have much else to say about this game by this point, though. All the stuff I complain about applies to these levels, too. The only major difference between the beginning of the game and now is that since I run around collecting everything, I have all the upgrades, so I didn't get any trouble from enemies, bosses, the levels. It was just pressing the same combination of buttons over and over and over and over. Actually, yeah, let me go more in depth on these combos. Remember how I said why you wouldn't just use the instant kill one? Well, once you get it, that's all you do, because why not? I just found myself pressing the same two buttons in the same order for every enemy. I did the same for the bosses. I made it to that point where you get so lost in the tedium of the game that you start to think it's good. All that time you spent collecting and mashing have paid off, but you don't get a feeling of satisfaction, more of a sense of obligation. It's like a job you don't like. You hate every second of doing the same monotonous task because you've mastered it already, so there's no challenge. But if you don't keep doing it, you die. Dragon Ball Z Sagas is an allegory for the average working class citizen, or it's a bad game. It's one of the two. So after beating the... A meteor hit me before the fight even started. Come the fuck on! I made it to the final boss. It's fighting Perfect Cell with Gohan. And you guessed it, it's annoying and tedious. 
You have to get the Super Saiyan 2, which you do, of course, by hitting the same buttons over and over to build your meter. By this point, I have the best combo, which is hitting the same button three times, then holding the other one. It does an automatic super combo, so even less skill is needed on my part now. Two major problems with this final boss. One, at random times, Cell will just break your combo in the middle of it. There's no rhyme or reason, he can just do it, and you can't do it. The other is your Super Saiyan meter is constantly depleting. If it gets too low, you go back to normal, and then you have to get to Super Saiyan again, and then build the meter up more to get to Super Saiyan 2. It goes down so fast, if Cell hits you once, he does some long combo, and your meter depletes so much you have to do four of your own to get back to that point. If you get hit twice, your meter gets too low. You might as well quit and restart because that's faster than sitting there and mashing square and only trying up 20 times. Eventually I get Super Saiyan 2 and manage to beat Cell, and then you gotta kill him with a Kamehameha and game's over. Wait, it's over? Uh, what about the Buu Saga, the last one in Dragon Ball Z? You know, I would think a game called Dragon Ball Z Sagas would have all of the sagas of Dragon Ball Z. Did Team 4 Star make this? You might be wondering, well, after all that, do you get anything for beating the game? Yes, you get two things, actually. Two new modes, extras, which aren't extras, they're the cutscenes from the game that you've already seen. Nothing extra about that. The other one is actually kind of cool, the Pendulum. It lets you replay any level as any of the playable characters, including extra characters like Yamcha, Adult, Gohan, Tien, Krillin, even Broly and Bardock. And going back to those levels that gave you shit early on as an overpowered Broly, I have to admit it's a really awesome reward. The level should have been good in the first place, but whatever. You still can't blast past small rocks though.